American sculptor Augusta Savage was born and raised in Green Cove Springs, Florida. From a young age, she loved crafting sculptures of small animals out of the natural clay mud where she lived. After winning an award at the local fair as a young woman, she decided to take her sculpting career more seriously. She moved to New York and completed a four-year course of study at Cooper Union in just three years. She ran into many challenges due to her gender and the color of her skin, but she did not let these stop her. After studying in France, she returned to the U.S. hoping to make her living doing portrait busts, but the Great Depression meant there were not many commissions for such work. She took this time instead to found the Savage School for Young Artists in Harlem, New York. Future famous artists such as Jacob Loritz attended her school. She also founded the Harlem Artist Guild with other artists such as Aaron Douglas and Romare Bearden. In 1939, she was hired to sculpt a large piece for the World's Fair. She worked on this piece for over two years and was inspired by the poem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. The fair organizers retitled her sculpture simply The Harp, but it was very popular. However, Augusta Savage didn't have enough money to ship or store the plaster sculpture after the exhibit, and it was destroyed. Many of her works were made from plaster and have not survived. Let's sculpt some small animals out of clay like the young Augusta would have done. So for today's sculpture project inspired by Augusta Savage, you're going to need some kind of a clay. I'm using a Crayola air dry clay. There's several other brands like Stonex that you would be able to find easily at a craft store or online. This one is very easy to find, not too expensive, and easy to work with. If you don't want to use an air dry clay, you could also use Model Magic, Play-Doh, or if you wanted to create something um, more lasting, you could also work with a polymer clay, such as Fimo or Sculpey. So I'll demonstrate the methods for the air dry clay. If you're using one of the other materials, you would not use the water to help bond pieces together, but most of the rest of the technique would be the same. So I'm going to start by getting a small lump of clay and kneading it in my hands to warm it up. This is going to make the clay blend better, get the air bubbles out, and soften it up so it's a bit easier to work with. So I'm just kind of taking a ball and smushing it in my hands. If you're using Play-Doh, you may not need to do this. Okay, so I'm going to show how to make a little cat, like this one that I made the other day. It's a cat reclining. If I made a cat standing up, it would be difficult to get the structure of the legs, um, which are kind of thin, to hold up the rest of the body and head of the animal. But if you're doing kind of a chunkier animal such as an elephant or a rhino, you could make it standing up. So here I've got my ball of clay. I'm going to divide it in half. And take off a piece to keep for the tail. So then this large ball, I'm going to form into kind of an egg shape or a long cylinder. And this is going to be the body. I want to try to get any bubbles out or really big cracks. And so this is going to be the body of my cat. Now this, I'm going to divide in half again. Put one half to the side. I'm going to take this piece and divide it into four equal pieces for the legs. So 
for the back legs, I'm going to make kind of like this P shape for like the hip here and the paw. So I'm going to start with a ball and then flatten it between my thumb and finger and pull out one section as I'm working. So that would be one back leg. And let me do that again. Make a ball. Squish it flat and pull out the section for the lower leg and the paw. And they're about the same size. If yours are really different, you could take a pinch of clay off, start over, ball it back up, and get them closer in size. I'm going to do the same thing for the front legs, except that round portion will be a little bit smaller for the front legs. So the leg part will be longer, like so. Sometimes you just can't get it to do what you want, so go back and roll it back into a ball or a cylinder and start over with that piece. Okay, so there are my front legs and my back legs. Now, to attach these, I'm going to do a scratch and wet and smush method. So here's what I mean. I'm going to scratch with a toothpick, or this is a scratch art tool, I think they work great. Also an orange stick or a um, disposable plastic knife, like that type of tool would work for doing the scratching. So I'm going to scratch on the two back hips. <clears throat> then I'm also going to scratch the clay <clears throat> on the body piece that I'm trying to attach and get one drop of water, maybe two, and put it on each spot. Then I'm going to smush those pieces together until I feel like they have really bonded. So again, I'm scratching on the main piece and this is going to go this way. So scratching where this piece is, is attaching to the body, getting a dab or two of water, not very much, and smushing that to the body. I'm going to put it down on the table now as I'm working to make sure those legs sit down on the table just like the cat's legs would do in real life sitting on the floor wherever they're sitting. Okay, and I'll smooth out. I like to use the back of my fingernail. You could also use the flat part of this tool. So smooth out any wrinkles here that have happened. Okay, now we had this little part that we pulled off from the body originally. I'm going to stretch this into a kind of a snake, not too thin, and this is going to be the tail. So I'll make some scratches here and right here on the back end of the cat, get a drop or two of water, and I'm going to smush that tail without smushing my legs that I've already made smush that tail and gently blend that clay right into the body of the cat. If you're making a dog, it would be almost the same exact steps. Some dogs have a short tail. Some have a bushier tail. I'm doing a short haired cat right now. So I'm going to attach this tail to make it nice and strong so it doesn't break off once it's dry. 
I attach that to one of the legs. And I'm just smoothing some of the wrinkles out as I go. Okay, so now for the front legs of the cat. I'm going to do the same procedure. Alright, so now we've got the body of our cat, we just need the head. So I'm going to take this lump, it's gotten a little cold while I was using the other pieces. So I'm going to knead it to get it warm again and make it into a ball. This seems a little big for the cat's body, so let me make it smaller. That seems about right. So there's two ways you could do the ears. If you were doing a floppy eared dog, you could use an extra piece of clay to add some ears the same way that we did with all these legs and tail. Um, for the cat, I'm just going to pinch two kind of triangle shapes from the head and then smooth out the head with those triangles. So the cat's ears are kind of a flat triangle shape. So I'm pinching and forming those triangles from my ball of clay. And I want them to be kind of even, evenly spaced on the head. And I might decide which side looks more like the front of the cat's head and which seems more like the back. I think this will be the front. So I'm going to pinch the front of the cat's face a little bit to make the snout where the nose and the mouth would be located. And if I don't like how it's turning out, I can always go back to my ball and start the shaping over again just by pinching it and pressing it in different places until I get the shape I want. This clay is a little dry, so you'll see I've gotten a, a tiny dab of water from my dish every once in a while. Do not add too much. It's much more difficult to work with clay that's too wet. So once you're happy with the shape of your cat's head, I'm going to make his ears kind of curve forward a little like he's paying attention. He sees or hears something interesting. So that looks like a good cat head. Now eventually I'll add some eyes, but I want to go ahead and attach this head first. So I'm going to scratch up the body and the head so I get a good bond and put a dab or two of water and then smush the head gently onto the body. And to me, this shape actually looks a little bit more like my dog than a cat because I think I've made these ears a little too big and floppy. I must have been thinking of my puppy. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to decide at this point, eh, that's not a cat, it's a dog. I have this kitty cat here. This is going to be my dog. So his nose would probably come out a little bit more than the cat's nose would. And so now this has become a dog. And sometimes that happens when you're working on art. You start out with one idea and the art piece has a mind of its own. 
and take shape as something else. So I like to just roll with it. This clay wanted to be my puppy today. So there we've got Fozzie, the dog. All right, so once I have him all put together, I'm going to go back and smooth any of the joints together to make sure that he's not gonna break apart when he's dry. And if there's any cracks or blemishes in the clay, I like to use the back of my fingernail. You could use a popsicle stick or the scratch art stick to do some of that smoothing. I think my hands are the best clay tool. So I'm just smoothing some of these little cracks. And then last thing, I'm going to add some eyes for him. So I put the pointed end of my toothpick or scratch heart stick and I gently press it in, roll it around to give him big eyes. And then if I want, I could take a tiny piece of clay, even smaller than that, tiny piece and make kind of a little triangular nose for him. and stick that right on there like his nose and I'll partially blend that in but not all the way if you were doing a cat you might carve some little whiskers I'm going to put some little freckles here I don't know if you would call them freckles but I think it makes his nose look cute and carve a little mouth like that and then my dog is finished now this air dry clay needs a couple days this brand to dry so what I like to do is put it inside of a plastic bag that's left open and leave it to dry on the counter for maybe two or three days. Partway through, you could turn it over so that different sides get the air and dry more evenly. And, um, oh, while it's still wet, you can carve your initials into the bottom and you could even put the year or the date so I'll do that so I can remember when I made this. I still have some clay pieces that I made as a child in my Aunt Virginia's pottery studio and it's pretty cool to see those now as an adult. So here's my dog. After he's dried hard, this one was done a few days ago, I can take acrylic or craft paint and paint over him and then you can even seal that paint in with some Mod Podge. Um, some people have luck using watercolors on hardened clay, but I find that sometimes that seeps back into the clay and kind of makes a mushy mess. So I really recommend acrylic or craft paints and um, you could color it however you want. Maybe this would be a calico cat my dog Fozzie has kind of a brown and black brindle coat, so I'll paint him like that in two to four days once he's dry. So I hope you enjoyed this clay sculpting project inspired by the artwork of Augusta Savage. And we'll see you next time 